most important fight of your life outside of the octagon, outside of MMA? What's the most important fight? Besides the girlfriend issues. I, I know we, we... Girlfriend issues have been issues because okay. of my sport. We're just going to okay. clarify that first. But no, wait a minute. I remember having conversations when you were in We don't need school. to talk about this. You just said we didn't need to talk about this. I can tell you where we were. We were at Whataburger down there on River Road. Whataburger. There's not an ER. I worked there. I know. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> what a burger. What a burger. Water burger? What's a water, water burger? burger. <laughs> you know, I mean, that just man, if me. you weren't so young, I'd no. Water burger. What is it? What a burger. Yeah. That's why we met at Water Burger. I never I didn't realize That's that. why I worked. But I remember there. you so that was before you were a professional athlete or right. anybody knew how to spell your name and yep. before you were a doll. Yep. Or all that. Yeah. Definitely way before uh, that. I was working at you, AAA Landscaping. I rem but I remember you crying, Jeff, can you come talk with me about my girlfriend? Yeah. It was sad. Yeah. But see, it's still a problem. It was a problem before. I'm just saying, still it's not single. because you're a professional. Must be doing something wrong. Yeah. I must not have helped you much, huh? Not really. <laughs> I've learned a lot since then. I can help you now. You're still married. I mean, I know, 30 years. No. My beautiful wife, yeah. Congratulations. That's really, it's not easy to do. I pray for that one day. It's harder for her than for me. I could see that. To Alive, I want to welcome those of you who join us online. For those of you who are new with us, we're actually wrapping up a series today called Fight that we started Easter weekend. When I first talked about that, um, Everybody said, are you crazy? You want to do a series called Fight on Easter and you want to end Fight on Mother's Day? And I'm like, well, if you want just touchy-feely, you can go anywhere for that. But come to Alive for Fight. And the reason we did this was because on Easter weekend, Jesus fought for you, the fight of the universe, and he won. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so glad for that. And by the way, if you missed any of this talk series, you can go back, alivechurch.com, and you can catch up on it because he fought for you. The next week we talked about how we're to fight for our faith. So I thought, where else to go? What better place to go than to a world champion fighter? So if you don't know who Dominic is, he grew up in our church, but he is four-time champion uh, in MMA. He's a UFC fighter right now. Uh, he was actually commentating a fight last night on Fox. And so I'm so grateful to have him, and he's given us a lot of insight. I'm going to use the, some more clips of his today, along with his family, because we're going to talk today about fighting for your family. Last week, we talked about fighting temptation. And, and we, we learned that, you know, temptation isn't sin. We're all tempted. But how do we fight temptation and not get into sin? So today we want to talk about fighting for our families. Now, it's Mother's Day, and moms, here's what I want to say to you. You are typically so much better at fighting for the family than we men are. It's just true, right, guys? Yeah. yeah. Man, guys, I gave you a big opening to score some brownie points there, and you didn't do it, okay? Uh, so moms, thank you, and to my mom, happy Mother's Day. To my mother-in-law, happy Mother's Day. Uh, and to my wife, happy Mother's Day. Um, but w ladies, for the most part, you're better at this. So guys, I'm going to lean in a little bit to, to you today. We need to get better at fighting for our families. That is just true. Now, while this is a great day of celebration, and I've seen ladies coming in with flowers. You don't see flowers around the library very often, but we're giving them, we have a treat for you ladies. It's chocolate, and I've sampled it three times just to make sure. That, and if you ladies don't like Ghirardelli chocolate, I just want you to know that your pastors all do, okay? We've all sampled it. And so we love, but happy Mother's Day to you. And here's what I want to say to you. I know that for some of you, Mother's Day is a very hard weekend. I'm sorry. For some of you, you've lost your mom, and this is a tough weekend. And, and for others, you may be a mom who's lost children. We have several of those that attend the live. And I'm sorry for you. I understand. It is, it's a hard weekend for you. And then uh, there are those of you who you grew up with a mom who you would say, there is nothing about my mother that I want to celebrate. It was just a bad relationship. And I'm sorry for you. But thank goodness, the majority of moms aren't like that. The majority of moms are our heroes. And while I can't change the past and what you've gone through, what I can do is help with the future. And we're looking toward the future, and we're saying we want to help raise up the next generation of moms 
to be the best moms, godly moms that God intended us to be. Are you with me alive? So we're going to talk about fighting for our family. Now, in light of being a Mother's Day, I want to show you a picture of my mom. This is her high school graduation. Yeah, I know. Woo, that's my mom. She was the, what do you call the queen, prom queen or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe it was a corn queen back in Ohio. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, whatever that queen thing is, that was, she was it, and the cheerleader and all that. This is mom just a couple years ago, Thanksgiving with all of us kids. Now, here's what I want to ask you. I want you guys to get involved in this. Uh, as we talk about fighting for your family, would you take out your phones, text me, you can tweet me online, Facebook, whatever. What makes mom a hero? What makes mom a hero? And, and let's have some fun with this. I've had fun all weekend with it. Now, when it comes to relationships, God has given us relationships as a blessing. There to be a place of encouragement. When you talk about family life, it should be a place of stability and encouragement and blessing, a place of peace. A place where we can go when the world beats us up and and they've got our backs. The tension of that is, unfortunately, a lot of us have have experienced the opposite of that. And we say, yeah, it's supposed to be a place where I'm cheered on, but that's the very place I'm beat up. So today we want to talk about how we reverse that and say, let's fight for our families. And you may not be married, you may not have kids, but we're talking about all of your relationships. This is life-changing stuff from the Bible when it comes to relationships, because your relationships are God-given, and they are to be used to encourage one another. Here's what the Bible says about it. Proverbs 18, 21. If you would, let's read this out loud together. Church online, read with me. The tongue can bring death or life. We can speak death or life. Now, let me ask you a question. Who would you rather be friends with, somebody that always speaks death or somebody who speaks life? Which one? Life. Pretty much the consensus. Nobody's saying, yeah, give me some death people. I, there's enough death people out there, right? They speak death to your dreams, to your hopes, to your whatever. Now, if you were to say Jesus fits one of these categories, where would you put him? Would you say Jesus fits speaking death or life? He fits speaking life. He even clarified in John 10:10. 10, 10, he said, I came to give you life abundantly, a rich, satisfying life. You see, part of our mission here is leading people to be followers of Jesus. We want to point everybody to Jesus. I don't want you to follow me. I don't want you to follow an organization or a church. Follow Jesus. Look to him. He is our hope. And Jesus came to give us life. So we want to speak life. The tongue can bring death or life. Now, here's how I want to say it today. Here's what I want you to get from this. You discourage, just taking Proverbs 18, 21. You discourage or encourage everyone around you. Everyone around you. Now, this is part of fighting for our family. I want to be an encourage. Now, if I ask you that question again, which would you rather be around, people who encourage you or discourage you? Which one, discourage or encourage? encourage. Yeah, which one are you? And some of you say, well, I just tell it like it is. Well, you're probably very lonely. You probably need some friends. And I'm not volunteering to be your friend. And most of the people aren't because we want to be around and encourage. There's enough people. Now, it, you, you may be in a family where you're like, well, I've got to keep my kids or my spouse. I've, I've got to keep them on the ground here. And I don't want to over-encourage them. Believe me, you can't over-encourage because there are so many people in the world that are going to discourage them that you'll never outbalance that. So let's encourage. And if you were asking, really, what's Jesus? Is he an encourager or a discourager? And some of you, you're here and you're saying, well, I'm not a follow Christ, and I've kind of got a negative view of God and of Jesus and all that. And Well, I'm here to tell you that he's an encourager. You know what he says about you? He says that you're his masterpiece. Somewhere along the line, we get these negative, like God's up there and he's just waiting to flip us in the head when we mess up. And it's not true. He is for you. Jesus said, I came that you'd have life. He's, did you know Paul says that he considers us, you, his prized possession? Well, that, that's different than what the world would tell us. We need to encourage. Now, I want you to make this very personal today, okay? Let's make this very personal, so I want you to read it this way with me. Everybody online, let's read it out loud together. I discourage or encourage everyone. I in, discourage or encourage And we're all saying we want to encourage, right? So this is life-changing stuff. And I'm going to show you today 
what the Bible says about how we do this and how important it is that we fight for our families and our relationships by encouraging one another and how these are three things that Jesus did for us. Now, I asked Dominic uh, about this very concept. I know I didn't let him answer the question in the intro. I'll let him answer it here in just a moment. But I asked him to answer the same question that you guys are answering about what makes mom a hero because he says in interviews all the time when he's asked, who's your hero? He says, my mom. So I let him talk about that. What's this? You were asked, who's your hero? And you said, my mom. Why do you say your mom is your hero? You know, my mom and Bo Jackson. <laughs> Bo Jackson's awesome. Bo Jackson and your mom. But I'll say, my mom is number one. And the reason what about, is... What about... <laughs> your shirt? Me. Oh. Um, By well, the way, you were talking about reading self-help books. Did you, have you read that? There's a really breaking book out. It's just awesome. Called Life Power. Have you read that? No. I'll sign a copy for you the later. The one that you couldn't remember the title to about <laughs> 10 minutes ago? That's pretty bad, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't remember my building blocks. Yeah, there you go, man. That's really bad. You spend yeah. all these years writing that book, and I'm like, I can't think of the title right now. That's what yeah. happens in front of people, I know. Yeah. Um, so why is mom your hero? Well, it was that. That was one of the biggest reasons. I mean, I just, I've seen countless countless for instance i have an example there was um this one girl i know that had a full ride scholarship to like three different colleges and she didn't go to college because her mom didn't want to let her leave and she kept her home and made her stay and it breaks my heart to even it almost made, brings me to tears thinking about it but um she ended up not having any of the you know who knows what could have happened? She had full ride. She didn't have to pay. And she, you know, she ended up not going to school and doing other things, and it just wasn't, wasn't good. Let's put it that way. And um, that really, that's a great example of what I mean. Like, the mother, the mother was so selfish that she couldn't even let her daughter leave because she would miss her too much. And now she kept her own daughter from all the great things that she could have had. And that really, that really struck really deep with me because my mom right off the bat, not only did she kick me out right when I needed to be kicked out, <laughs> uh, which actually also was probably the thing that made me want, as strong as I am today, unfortunately, it had to happen. Um, <clears throat> she just, I don't know, it's just always, she just always was just kind of like, whatever your decision is, I'll go with it. Uh, I don't know, maybe I wasn't making horrible decisions, but I can't really see being a professional mixed martial artist as the smartest decision in the world for most mothers. Most, I, I would think most mothers would be like, why? You know, why would you want to stop going to school? She didn't even, she just right off the bat knew how much I had already invested into the sport of wrestling and knew that she wasn't really going to be able to, I made my decision, I think. And at the same time, she was just right off the bat supportive. And that's a huge thing. If your family's not supportive of you and just doesn't go with you, it's really, it really can become a huge huge problem. It's a huge deal. It's a really big deal. And you hear what he said? If your family's not supportive, it's a big problem. So how do we live this out? How do we encourage one another? Because you encourage or discourage. You discourage or encourage everyone around you. I want to give you three things from the Bible. The first one is this. Encourage with words. Everybody say words. words. You encourage with words. In other words, how do you speak? Do you speak words of, remember Proverbs 18, 21, do you speak words of death or life? And we all said we'd rather be around people who speak life. We need to be people who speak life. Jesus spoke life. He speaks life to us. Through his word every day, we have the privilege of sitting and reading his word every day. And I would encourage you to know just a few key, key verses of his word. And if you say, well, I, I'm new, and I've tried reading the Bible, and it's not all that encouraging, and I always, people tell me that, and I'm like, well, where did you start reading at? And they go, well, at the beginning of the book, just like any book. So they read Genesis, Exodus, they got to Leviticus, and they're like, oh my goodness, how many of y'all read Leviticus? You know, it's the Old Testament law, and I'm thinking, oh, I, there is no way. Well, we would love to help you understand what words of Jesus to read. Get up into the New Testament, what he says about you. He fulfilled the law, and now we live in grace. Anybody glad for that? So we encourage with words. That's the first thing we need to do. That's how God uh, treats us. He encourages us with words. And you heard Dominic talk about how this is so important. 
that your family's with you. We need to fight for our families. Here's what the Bible says. The Hebrews writer says, encourage, well, let's read it together. Encourage one another. How often? You see, Mother's Day is one of the day, those days where we're like, okay, how it, we're encouraging family, and we get with our moms. And, but it doesn't have to be just Mother's Day. This should be every day. Encourage one another daily, especially those that we know and love the most. Encourage one another with words. You either discourage or encourage everyone around you. The, the Bible says, Proverbs writer says, it's, you speak death or life. Let's speak life. That's what we need in our lives. That's what Jesus does for us. Now, I asked Dominic at the beginning of the service in the intro, I said, Dominic, what's the biggest fight outside of the octagon? And I didn't let him answer that. We got on the water burger. What do you guys have? What a burger or what er burger? It's ER for everybody that lives in Tucson. I'm sorry, but that's how it comes out, you know? Um, what a burger. And we got off on that in the girlfriend tangent, and we just thought that was a little bit fun. Anyway, I want you to hear his answer because his answer to the biggest fight outside of the octagon has to do with words. The hardest fight besides girlfriends outside of the octagon and outside of the practice and all that. This is my thing, you know, the hardest fight. Outside. The hardest fight uh, literally is probably just staying focused. It really is, just staying focused. And what I mean by that is um, there's, you just, the world is built of people that don't want you to succeed. It's the weirdest thing. It's the strangest thing. Uh, everybody wants to keep you right where they're at. You can't be mm -hmm. above. And they even don't really want you under them. It's really weird. A lot of people don't want you under them. They just want you right there with them. It's just like the, the per, you know, the, it, it's, I can't even really understand that. But once I did, I realized I was done listening. I'm just, I'm done listening to these people. I'm doing things my way. Um, and that was the hardest thing to really try to understand. I mean, when I told people I was going to quit going to school, quit all my jobs, move to San Diego, become a professional, at that time it was called a cage fighter. It's mixed martial arts now. It's not cage fighting. But at that time when I did it, I was 19 years old. Um, they laughed at me in my face. <laughs> it was, yeah, okay. And it's, it's like, why would that be the first response? You know, people tell me that all the time, and that's not my first response. Why was that theirs? It's theirs because they can't even get themselves out of their own lives. They're stuck in it. They don't want any. They're they're happy with mediocrity. And once I realized that. That, it's like, I don't want that, so I'm not going to listen. They're not doing anything right for themselves. Why would they give me any kind of common sense direction? They're not. The only people that are going to give you common sense directions are the ones that are closest to you, that love you, and yourself. And that's it. And my mom, I told her, and my mom was the first one to just say, okay, you don't need to go to school to make money. That was it. Yay, mom, right? I know some of you are going, oh, I've been trying to get my kid to go to school. Well, listen, if you're just making a decision about college, most of you probably are not headed toward being an MMA champion, okay? So you, need, you may need to go to school for your uh, career. Uh, if you're going to be an MMA champion, you don't have to. Uh, we just need to make those decisions. But let's be encouraging. You speak words of death or life. The tongue speaks words of death or life. You discourage or encourage everyone around you. So let's encourage with our words. Let's speak life. You know, I love Dominic. He's talking about how everybody around him, they just wouldn't want to keep him, not necessarily below or above him, but they want to keep everybody level, mediocre, le mediocre. Let me just tell you around here at Alive, we don't like mediocrity. We don't want to be mediocre, and we don't want to see you live in mediocrity. We want to help you become all that God wants you to be, to be the masterpiece he created you to be. So we're here to help you do that. That's what we want to speak to you. Now, I go, we go on in Ephesians. Paul says this. Paul says, don't use, talking about our words, we, the way we do this, the way we speak life, the way we uh, give encouragement to those around us is by our words. He says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let what? I, now, I, I got to tell you, on your next steps today, on the back of your connection card, uh, we're talking about living as encouragers, and there's three ways, these three actions, 
And I'm going to ask you to either choose one or all three. I chose one for me this week, and mine was that I would speak just words of encouragement because I'm not coming at you with a place of strength uh, when it comes to my personal relationships. So when I get to this verse, I'm like, wow, everything that I say should be good and helpful. I I mean, I'm really going to let that be my measurement this week, that everything I say be good and helpful. He goes on, he says, so that your words will be what? An encouragement to those who hear them. So that all our, look, we represent Jesus, those of you who are followers of Christ. He's an encourager. We need to be encouragers to them. And for those of you who are not Christians, and you know a Christian who's not an encourager, I'm sorry. We fail. We fail. And we'll fail again. But today the challenge is let's be more like Jesus. And let's encourage because we either speak discouragement or encouragement to everybody around us. So let's speak it with our words. The second thing is we encourage with our actions. We encourage with our words. Now we encourage with our actions. You know, if you're a, a follower of Christ and you, you've never been baptized, next week's baptism weekend. How many of you have been uh, to a baptism service here live? Anybody? Well, isn't that a fun weekend? I love it. It's so fun. There, there are over 30 of you who have made decisions, faith decisions in the last three weeks. And your next step is to get baptized. Or if you've never been baptized, yeah. Oh no, you can't do it halfway here to life. If somebody starts, you got to go all in, okay? Baptism is great, right? Yeah, okay. I I know somebody's like, oh, I wish they wouldn't clap. Now I have to clap and you know deck the guy. I don't know. Um, So listen, that's your next step. If you've never been baptized and you're a follower of Christ. Why? Because that's one of those actions that Jesus talks about that is a public action that will encourage your friends, your friends, family, loved ones. They'll come and they'll be a part of that, and they'll see that you are making a public statement about being a follower of Jesus. And it is a great, great action for you to take. Jesus took action to, sh- to show encouragement to us. Go back four weeks ago when we started the series, um, and we see on Good Friday, he took action. He came to earth and He was crucified for us so that our sin, our guilt, the shame of our past can be forgiven. We've got to act encouraging. We've got to take action in this. Now, here's what uh, James, the brother of Jesus, says. He says, faith by itself isn't enough. Now, a lot of times people use this verse to argue, are we saved by faith or are we saved by grace? That's not even what he's talking about. And Jesus and all the New Testament writers, including James, makes it very clear that we're saved by putting our faith in Jesus, and it's his grace. When I get to heaven, you, you, we all hear, hear the joke of, you know, Peter meeting you at the pearly gates or whatever. I'm not even sure what a pearly gate is. Uh, but, you know, he, he, Peter saying, why should I let you in? Well, listen, my answer is very simple. It's nothing that I did. It's nothing I didn't do. I'm going to point to Jesus and say, he's the only reason I get in. It's great. It's believing in Jesus. So this isn't about our eternal life. He is talking about our life here on earth. He says, faith by itself isn't enough. He says, unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. In other words, our actions need to line up with what we say. Our actions need to line up. This is a values issue. If I told you, uh, you heard Dominic talk about in the video, we've been, my wife and I celebrated 30 years. I told you, hey, I really love my wife. And I do, I really love my wife. But if I said, however, you know, a couple times a year, I'm unfaithful on her. You'd say, well, you don't really love your wife. And you'd be right. You see, it's a values issue. When our actions don't line up with what our words are, we got a problem. We need our actions to line up. You either discourage or encourage everyone. So your actions need to line up with those words of encouragement. Now, I interviewed Suzette. She was in the last service. Uh, who is, they still attend alive here. Uh, Dominic now lives in San Diego for uh, UFC. But uh, I interviewed her and asked her about some of the actions she has taken as a mom. And if you heard in the last clip, uh, some of the actions are tough love. She kicked him out of the house. And I got to interview him about that, but I didn't get to use that part in in the services. But uh, I remember that time very well. So sometimes parents, if, if you're parents, sometimes tough love kicking in. It's not all... Encouragement isn't always flowery and happy. Sometimes it's speaking the truth in love. So listen as Suzette talks about her actions with Dominic. With regard to being part of his actual uh, fights, um, 
It's an amazing process because I literally do watch all his fights, and I'm there. Um, I have excellent seats. I'm right there. What's interesting is uh, beforehand, we pray. And that's oh, hopefully that's, cool. that's one of the things that has continued to be a standing um, positive effect in his life is that God literally has authority over him in and through the entire fight because I am there um, strategically praying some of the things that he's told me that are issues that he wants to do, that he wants to accomplish. And I literally uh, am praying in support of him, thanking God in advance for those things taking place. That's cool, man. And we, we do a phone call in advance because I can't see him. We learned that early on uh, because it softened him. It, 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 you can't you know, see it, him. We, you I, mean I can't physically see you can't... him before the fight because it's too hard. And I, we have to learn that the hard way. just me personally. I'm kind of weird and maniacish. No, uh, it, it's understandable. Okay, and that's, that's it would, interesting. It would tough, it, it would, um, you know, I'm mom, right? So uh, we learned that. I respect that with, with all of my being. And he places a phone call. We talk. We pray. We go over everything. He takes control of his, his brain. And the Lord guides and directs him and protects him through that fight. So your mom may have just given away your secret weapon here, man. <laughs> the prayer before. The Absolutely. prayer and mom praying the prayer with before. you. Yeah. yeah, no, it does help. Um, it's, I don't know, it just, it's something that... Uh, it's, I think it's, it gives me some sense of control, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's a mental thing. I, everything I do before a fight is mental. That's what I was explaining, like the walkout music, the, everything is mental that day. Nothing is physical anymore. Like you, everybody has this notion that you know, it's gonna be physical, the fight's happening. It's all mental on that day because the physical part's already done. I'm in shape, I'm, everything's on point. It's just about getting my mind on point. Mm -hmm. So on that day, the prayer just kinda We've always prayed. It's always been something we've done since I was a kid and that's cool. just carried over, I think. So that's pretty uh, action-oriented, isn't it? Praying with your kid. And parents, I want to encourage you, you. You start doing that when they're young. And some of you say, well, it's too late. Well, no. Don't just tell your kids as they get older. Just say, I'm praying for you. Take time and pray with them. You're, you encourage with your actions. And that, that is one simple action. And Suzette, she's done that with her kids uh, since they were young. That's a part of their life. And now she's praying with the UFC champion before he goes. And she gets to pray with other UFC fighters because of that. Encourage with your actions. Jesus did that. He does that in our lives. He did it when he went to the cross. He, he didn't just say, well, I love you. You're on your own. He said, no, I'll show you I love you. And I'm going to make a way for you to have life. So we encourage with our words. We encourage with our actions. Look at what Paul says here. I mean, the Hebrews writer says, in uh, talking about encouraging with our actions. He says, let us think of ways to motivate one another. So this is action-oriented. We, we either discourage or encourage everyone around us. Think of ways. He says, come up with ways. Pray about it. Say, Lord, help me to come up with ways to motivate those around me to acts of love and good works. We are to encourage with our words and our actions. Everybody say those two with me. Words and actions. Proverbs writer said it, you speak death or life. The tongue can speak death or life. We want to speak life. You either encourage, discourage, or encourage everyone around you. Let's encourage them with our words, our actions. And the third one is with our presence. Encourage with your presence. Well, what does that look like? Let me illustrate this real quick. So we have a daughter who's married, lives in Indianapolis, and uh, we have a grandson named Ender. Um, so this year... She called us, and she said, Dad, Ender has a problem, and they're going to go emergency surgery kind of thing in two mornings. It's scheduled. This is late one night, so there's only a 24-hour kind of thing in between. And uh, having to do with his head, he has to go in for surgery. Will you pray? So we, we prayed, and when we hung up the phone, she didn't ask us to come. She didn't want us to spend the money or anything like that. And We hung up the phone, and Kathy and I looked at each other and said, we've got to go. Whatever it costs... And whatever our schedules, we've got to clear it, and we've got to be there for her. So when we landed there, she just couldn't believe it. That's so important. It meant so much to her that we were there. There's a time. You know, I, I don't know, we can't, we can't be with everybody all the time. But one of the most encouraging things you can do to fight for your family is to be with them in your presence. Jesus came and invaded earth, 
came into our neighborhood. He brought his, his presence, literally, God brought his presence to earth. And by the way, before he left this earth and ascended to the right hand of the Father, he said, I will be with you always. I'm sending my spirit to be with you. His presence is always with us. We encourage with your presence. This is an ender update, by the way. Yeah. I, I mean, hey, Grandpa's got to get it in on Mother's Day. I don't even know how those connect, but somebody last night asked me, what's all that green stuff in front of your grandson? <laughs> I know, for those of you who don't live in Tucson, that makes no sense to you. You're like, what does that mean? I told them corn, and they went, oh, okay. <laughs> Here's what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians. This is about encouraging with your presence. Timothy is one of the pastors that he has raised up. He's a young man at this time, and he has helped plant planted the church in Thessalonica, and they are going through a, a troubling time, a time that says that could shake you. We, we've all gone through times of troubles that will shake us. That's one of the reasons we always talk about life group. Get in those relationships, and this is a time where you can sign up for a life group. Have those relationships for when you're going to be shaken. He says, so Paul says, we sent him, that is Timothy, to strengthen you. Do you see Timothy's coming in his presence, his physical presence, to strengthen him. Paul couldn't get there, and he says, I'm coming back, but I can't get there right now, so I'm sending Timothy to strengthen you and to encourage you in your faith. We encourage with our presence, not only our words and our actions, but our presence. He says, to keep you from being shaken by the troubles you were going through. We've got to be there for one another. We've got to fight for these relationships, whether it's family relationships or good friendships, we need to be there because we will go through troubles. Unless we be shaken in our faith, we've got to stand with one another. Encourage with your presence. Now, I uh, had the privilege of interviewing Dominic's brother that night as well. He came in for the weekend uh, when I did all the interviews. His name is Derek. He's a professional fighter uh, or a, a boxer, not an MMA. But I asked him about how they are there for one another as a family and as brothers. Listen as he talks about being there. You, you guys are in the same sport, but your brother's a world champion. Man, you got to deal with that a little bit sometimes. Say, man, my brother's here, and I'm working to get there. Yeah, it took, it took a lot. Like, early on, there was a lot of jealousy involved, of course. I mean, look at the guy, right? Um, so a lot, of that, a lot of that tied in. But then I realized that it's not so much a negative thing towards me that he is where he's at. This is a foot up for me. This is a position that God put him in to show me what I'm made of, to give me the opportunities, a perfect example of what to strive for in my sport. Mm -hmm. um, it was a big opportunity. After I realized that, and I realized that it's not about who's better between the two of us. We're a family. Um, we're more of a team than the team. You know what I mean? He helps me out any chance he gets. I help him out any chance I get. Now, granted, I can't tell him the perfect combination to stop somebody, but I can help him out with the little things, you know, being there for him. Whenever he needs me, he knows he can call me, I'll be there. You know what I mean? I'm always there for him, and that's something I try to strive for to help trade him out for the awesome things that he's done me. He's got me in shape. He's, he's helped me uh, find out who I am as a man and, and just bring me into the confident man that I am today. He's helped me out a lot with that. And so it's a, it's a real good iron sharpens iron thing between us. We both have our areas of strength and we both have our areas of weakness. I try to hold him up where he's weak and he definitely holds me up where I'm weak. Oh, so awesome. it's, a, it's a really good relationship that we have. He's always there for me, he says. We're always there for one another. We need to be there to fight for our families, relationship. Be there for one another. You encourage with your presence. The Proverbs writer said that we can speak the words with our tongues of death or life. And we all said we choose life, right? You either discourage or encourage everyone around you. We encourage them with our presence. Be there for them. Here's what Paul said in Thessalonians 5.11. Let's read this together. He said, so encourage each other and build each other. He didn't say this is an option. Do it. And how do we do this? How do we live out Proverbs? How do we live out what he says in, Thess uh, in 1 Thessalonians there? We do it by encouraging one another with our words, our actions, and with our presence. Fight for your families. And again, moms, I know some of you are so naturally good at this. Guys, we need to get better at it. We need to fight for our relationships we need to speak life. Now, I asked you guys uh, a little while ago, what makes a mom a hero? And so before I close, I'm going to read some of these. I have so many. There's no way I can read all of them. You guys really, I, it was going off like crazy. Somebody else said, or somebody said her selflessness. Most moms are selfless, right? 
She loves me no matter what. You have only a face and only your mom can love. Um, here's, here's one. I love this. Her magical kisses. That's great. Those kisses aren't so magical as you get older, are they? <laughs> you cross over that line where you're like, oh, mom, all my friends are looking. Come on. You know, park three blocks away. Quit saying that. I still tell Kathy. So I have a teenage son, too. He's just getting ready to turn 15 in a couple of weeks. And Kathy will still start to yell something out the window when we're picking him up at school. So I say, no, 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 no. And I'm putting the window up. And I'm like, honey, you don't understand. He's a 15-year-old boy. You can't say those things to him out loud. Wait till he gets to the car. Somebody here said, uh, mom has more power than all the superheroes combined. Huh? Yeah. They had that look that only they can have. And guys, we can't come up with that look. I'm not sure why. Here's what I want you to do. Take out your connection card. And we want to apply this this week. So I, I told you, I've picked one. But let, let's not just hear what the Bible says. Let's, let's really live it. This is how Jesus, he's the one we're following. This is how he lives. He encourages us with his words, his actions, and his presence. He's with us always. And if you didn't know that, if you're new and you say, I'm not a follower of Christ, you can experience that. And I'm going to give you a chance here in just a moment through a relationship with him. But what are your next steps? Any of us can do this. I'm choosing to encourage everyone around me with, and I chose the words I speak. I'm going to focus on that. Some of you may choose all three. Make that in action this week. Drop it in the offering bucket here in just a moment, and we're going to be praying for you as you live this out. We either discourage or encourage everyone around us. Let's encourage them. Let's encourage them to life. And I want to encourage you to life. Can you imagine having relationships, support relationships in your family, in your friendships, in your work environment of people who do not want you to be mediocre, but want you to succeed and be all that God created you to be? Can you imagine being that person that when you walk in the room, everybody's like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. I love being with this person. They're such an encourager. That's who Jesus is, and we are Jesus to others. So let's be that. Let's choose that. Would you pray with me? Father, in Jesus' name, as we come to the end of this talk, the end of this series, I am so grateful that you give us life, that you encourage us with life. You, you don't discourage us, and some of us may have been taught different, but the truth is you encourage us with life. You, you do it with your words. Your word speaks to us. It's there for us to pick up every day. And it is so encouraging what you say about us, what you say to us. You encourage us with your actions by sending your son, Father, to die on a cross for us, to, to wash away all of our sins, to remove the sin and guilt and shame of our past, to give us power to live our days and to give us the promise of eternity. You encourage us with your presence. Thank you, Jesus, that through your Holy Spirit, you're with us always. You said you'll never leave us. Now, Lord, as we're praying, we're all making some decisions. We're saying, okay, I want to be an encourager. And here's how I'm going to do it this week. I, I, for me, Lord, I need your help. I can't do this on my own. That I would encourage people with my words. It's not my natural bent. Would you help me to do that this week? Would you just pray that for you, whatever your step was? Maybe it's all three of them. Now, if you've never made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, he's the ultimate encourager. And he wants to encourage you to live life, the purpose and plan he has for you. Just invite him in right now to say, Lord, I invite you to forgive my sins, my guilt, my shame of my past. I receive your life right now. Would you help me to begin a relationship with you from this moment the rest of my life? In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to Church Online. I'm Justin. I'm a Live Church Online pastor.